Hi everyone, my name is Betsy Miller and I'm an herbalist with Frontier Co-op. And today I'm gonna to be talking about making infused oils using dried herbs for topical application. There's so many different ways that we can use infused oils. We can use them as is for massage or general skincare. We can use them to make other products like salves, balms, and creams. Uh, so this is one of my, my absolute favorite types of preparation to make. Um, when choosing your herbs to use to make infused oils, we wanna think about really rich aromatic herbs that have a lot of essential oils in them, volatile oils, because those extract well into carrier oils. Also very resinous or sticky herbs like um, myrrh or calendula, which we'll be using today that has a lot of resin in it, also extract very, very well into our carrier oils. There's all kinds of different carrier oils that you can use and they all have their own innate benefits. Um, two of my favorites are sweet almond oil, simply because it's a little bit more affordable, it's very well tolerated by most people, and then jojoba oil, which isn't actually an oil, it's a liquid wax. So that means it has a much longer shelf life than most other carrier oils, so it will actually add a preservative value to the rest of your product. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that we can make infused oils. The first one is what's called the folk method. So you wanna gather your equipment. Um, really, really important when making infused oils, even if we're using dried herbs that have no water content, you wanna sterilize all your equipment ahead of time. So make sure you're washing your jars, your materials with uh, boiling water, soap, letting them completely air dry. We just wanna uh, eliminate the possibility of introducing bacteria into our oils. Uh, and then I'll talk about a little bit about uh, making sure we're not introducing bacteria after they're already made. So uh, I recommend using a glass jar that has a tight fitting lid. I love using canning funnels. It just makes getting the herbs into the jars much easier. And today we are gonna be making a calendula infused oil. Calendula is one of my absolute favorite herbs to use topically. Um, I love using it to make my salves and my creams or just general massage. Uh, I always have calendula infused oil on hand. So we are just gonna put our calendula petals into our jar and I'm filling it up about halfway. Um, the key is you just wanna make sure you have space for at least one to three inches of oil above the level of the herbs because it's really important that uh, the herbs aren't floating on top of the oil. We wanna make sure they're fully submerged. Uh, another piece of equipment I recommend is a chopstick, which I use for stirring. And then we're gonna add our carrier oils on top. So we are using sweet almond. And you'll see how a lot of that oil initially just gets absorbed into the plant material there. And I'm gonna fill it up the rest of the way with jojoba, taking a moment to stir it around, make sure I'm getting everything submerged. Good. All the plant material is staying nice and protected under that oil. All right, then we're gonna put on our lid, give it a little swirl for good measure. And then we're gonna let this sit for about two to three weeks. And that's the folk method. Super simple way of making an infused oil. Um, if you wanna put it in the sun to get it a little bit more heat for extraction purposes, you can put it in a brown paper bag to protect, it, to protect the oil from oxidation, from direct contact with the sun. Or you can just put it somewhere in your home where it's uh, in a nice warm space. I like to give it a little swirl every day, once or twice a day, just to make sure that we're exposing as much surface area of the plant material to the oil as possible. And then after two to three weeks, you're gonna strain it out. Uh, I recommend straining it through cheesecloth. It'll help catch all the plant material and filter all that beautiful infused oil out through the cheesecloth. Um, you can let that sit for an additional 24 hours to let any sediment from the plant material collect at the bottom. And then you just carefully pour that oil off the sediment and you just discard that little last teeny bit of oil that has the sediment in it. Uh, if you're making an infused oil with a powdered herb, I recommend filtering through a coffee filter. Even though it's an incredibly slow and tedious process, it gets a much clearer, cleaner filter than using cheesecloth, which really does allow the, um, the powder to, to get through into your final product. So the folk method is an incredibly simple, effective way to make an herb infused oil with our dried oils. Uh, if we want an infused oil in faster time than two to three weeks, 
Um, my personal favorite way to make infused oils is applying external heat, so using the heat method. Uh, the beginning steps are the same. So we're gonna put our oil and our herb in the jar together, start up, make sure that that herb material is completely covered by the oil. And then we're gonna do what's called a water bath. So you wanna make sure that, again, the lid is very securely on the jar. We wanna minimize any potential for water to get into the jar. And you're simply gonna stick the jar of herb and oil in a pot that has water in it, just like this. And you're gonna turn it on low and you're gonna let it heat for about four to six hours on low heat on the stove. I recommend stirring it every hour or so just to make sure, again, we're exposing as much of the surface area of the plant material to the oil. It's not all settling to the bottom. And this allows you to have a much faster turnaround for making your infused oils. Uh, I, I really do love the heating method because a little bit of heat application just really facilitates a much better extraction of especially resins, but even the volatile oils into the carrier oil. Once you're done with those uh, four to six hours of infusion, the process for straining is the same. You're gonna strain through cheesecloth if you did a cut and sifted herb or coffee filter if you did a powder. Let it sit for 24 hours, pour off the oil from any sediment that's collected at the bottom, and then your infused oil is ready to use. You can either use it topically for massage, you can use it to make additional products like creams, salves, and balms. Um, and then just to make sure that you're ensuring a clean product moving forward, you wanna make sure you're not dipping your fingers directly into the oil if applying it. You wanna just pour it into your hand so you can even um, pour it back into the bottle of oil that you use to make it. Or if you have like a pump bottle, you can use that. You just really wanna minimize any opportunity to introduce bacteria into the products that you make. Um, I also recommend storing it in a cool, dark place. So you don't want to leave your oils in the bathroom that, uh, if you have a shower in there that get a lot of moisture. Uh, again, we just want to think about ensuring a clean quality product that has a long shelf life. Um, but some of my favorite, uh, herbs to use to make infused oils. I love using calendula. I use, love using comfrey. It's a perfect use for comfrey since we don't really want to use comfrey internally. Um, I use elderflower when I'm making facial serums. So again, any herbs that have a lot of aromatics to them, a lot of essential oils or beautiful sticky resins are perfect for making infused oils. Carrier oil choices, again, we've got jojoba, we have sweet almond, apricot kernel, there are coconut oil, so many different options. And I often love making a combination. Olive oil as well is excellent. Most people have olive oil around the home. Uh, I do recommend cutting olive oil with another oil uh, like jojoba since it can have a little bit of a greasier texture on the skin that might not be as appealing to some people. So this is one of the, the most fun preparations with our herbs that we can make at home. So easy, uh, very fun to use, and I hope you enjoy making some of your own.